Go ahead and get started. Uh, everybody hear me okay? Okay, cool. Uh, let's see, what's going on? Uh, we have announced a while back that we are going to be dropping support for Windows, the Windows 32 viewer, and uh, also support for older versions of Xcode uh, before, before 13. I think um, so we've done that in our current uh, builds um, as as stuff gets deployed and promoted you're probably going to start seeing those uh, those features uh, 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 going away deprecations happening um, so I don't think it should cause too much disruption for anybody. The number of people using those is pretty microscopic anyway, but uh, just wanted to let you know. I think the plan is that we're going to keep like the current viewer around as a kind of a side cohort. So if somebody tries to download a viewer when they're you know, on 32-bit windows or whatever, um, they'll get that old viewer, which will continue to work for a while, but of course they won't be getting updates. So uh, at some point, they're going to have to bite the bullet and switch to something else. Uh, let's see, what's going on with your releases? We have uh, emojis and uh, inventory previews, formerly thumbnails, uh, both in Project Viewer. Um, so you can check either of those out. There are a few updates coming for both of those. Uh, uh, the, the previews are getting uh, some bug fixes. The emojis are getting a uh, nicer uh, grid-based picker. Um, so uh, both of those should be showing up fairly soon. Actually, the, the bug fixes for, for previews are already out. We, we released that this week. Uh, GLTF work is continuing. That's basically bug fixes at this stage. Um, we do have some public uh, test regions out on Agni now. Uh, I think it's Rumpus Room. So if you want to check it out, uh, you can do that. Um, you sh there, we've got big signs everywhere saying that the format of the GLTF content may change and don't post any of this stuff to the marketplace. Um, so both of those are very good advice. Stuff can change or break, uh, no promises. The The point of having these um, these uh, test regions is for people to, to exercise the functionality, not to, not to start cranking out finished content. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, oh, in the next main release, uh, we've had some problems with crash rates on that one and we think we may have found the cause of that today so uh, hopefully the next release will have a fix for that and if it works then that will probably be the next viewer we promote uh, so I guess that's it uh, for kind of major topics um, what's going on with everybody else any new cool releases or anything Release the crickets. Uh, let's see. Anybody else? Ryder, anything new to say about what's going on on the back end these days? No, no. It's actually going to be a quiet week. We have a couple of couple of uh, simulators in QA. There's the uh, uh, Avatar Arrival, which is hopefully going to address some of the uh, uh, some of the, the frame bump. We see on, on the server when an avatar arrives, uh, hence the name. Uh, and then there's uh, another maintenance release coming up uh, with a it's got a couple of fixes, a couple of uh, new LSL functions. Um, looking forward to that.
Okay, well, I guess that's it for uh, official topics. I, I did have one question to just kind of throw out to see what you all thought about it. Um, one area that we haven't looked at a lot recently is physics, um, and I've heard I've heard complaints from some quarters that behavior of physics has gotten worse over time. Um, do you folks have any uh, experience trying to trying to get you know server side physics to do things? Or opinions about how it's working relative to to years past. What kind of physics? I I was probably thinking about havoc physics, you know, trying to trying to make your objects, you know, bounce around or fall realistically or whatever. I, <clears throat> excuse me. I would like to hear people's opinions on, on how the, on how the physics is or is not working. I mean, we, we know that the pathfinding has certain issues, um, but uh, you know, general general collisions and that sort of thing would would be very interested in. Text, texture loading is always done through the viewer. Uh, yes, vehicles very much. Um, that is that is deep in the havoc system. Through a script, you can't do that, Jenna. Thank you. 
I could have sworn back before I knew better I had done something that did exactly that, but uh, I could be I could be misremembering. Region crossings are problematic. I've described it as as split. You know, you, we we split the uh, the avatars from the vehicles, squish squish them all up into individual balls of mud, throw them across the uh, across the uh, region boundary, and then reassemble them on the other side. Uh, so it's. Got lots of room for failure. Yeah, the uh, region crossings actually come up frequently um, as a pain point uh, at the uh, t Tuesday afternoon slug. Um, the uh, the it's it's something where we're, uh, it's 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 an area it's an area we know that there are some problems in, and we will be we we do have on the uh, the roadmap. Uh, some some time all allotted for fixing it. And it's a that's a better topic for Tuesdays than than this meeting though, but Have you been seeing that happen more frequently, Jenna? Is there any pattern to teleport failures, or it's just uh, randomly happens more often than it used to? We have noticed uh, an increased failure with region crossings and teleport this uh, about last month or so. I. We have some some statistics on this end. I don't uh, I don't have them in front of me, but I will have to I will dive into them and see if we can see if we can see any sort of pattern. It's, it's very hard for me to address to address. There's something went wrong versus. Something went wrong under these conditions. So if I can uh, if I can isolate what the conditions are, it'll be much easier to to figure out what what exactly is going on.
Mm. So this is within the last few months, you said the teleport issues have become more frequent. Uh, what about uh, what about clouding? Uh, is are people seeing more fewer uh, avatars as clouds lately? Welcome hubs. Okay. Uh, what about other other regions? Is it more common in, you know, just popular non newbie areas, or is it specific to the hubs? Yeah, I think the clouds are just a thing that was added some years ago because we thought it looked nicer than uh, showing an incomplete appearance. Um, but of course, it's not it's not the only way to do it. Sure anybody would buy a cloud avatar when you could just have an incomplete appearance and be clouded for free. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get people, uh, get people fighting about uh, collectible clouds or something. Limited edition. Failed to log in today. We got a teal cloud. Hmm. Cloud color based on hash of your agent ID. We did that with jelly dolls at one point, so people would get a consistent uh, jelly doll color. Yeah, I kind of like that. I don't know why we got rid of it. I th I, yeah, I don't know. The, uh, I think the uh, well, actually, I do know. We, we changed it to gray because it was um, <sighs> there were two things. One is that the jelly dolls were pr still pretty expensive to render because they still included all your attachments, and the other thing is they were very um, they were very conspicuous. You know, you got these like brightly colored things calling attention to the avatars that you have the least information about. Um, I think it makes more sense for them to be kind of more subdued and you know focus the attention on the avatars that you actually can see um but, but, the I, but the gray ones don't look that great i agree i, I think probably we should get uh, a nicer looking uh, filler appearance than what we have now shift the, shift the color into a pastel maybe <laughs> or we could just pick a different color yeah Oh yeah, we could keep the colors and make them less uh, less bright. I guess be an easy enough change.
Persistent clouds, okay. Yeah, I guess it's possible that there's some content out there that uh, the big service isn't happy with if it can't, if it doesn't find the sort of mandatory body parts or it can't parse them, then it's going to, it's going to refuse to update your appearance and you're going to be clouded. Uh, maybe, yeah, the, um, the big service will try to cache your previous appearance, uh, based on your, I think it's your outfit, uh, your current outfit folder version. Yeah, maybe changing back. It, you know, it could be something intermittently is failing to load. Um, but yeah, if trying to wear the same outfit sometimes works and sometimes doesn't, then that's kind of odd. Of course, it's very easy to be clouded if you don't have one of the required body parts. You don't have a system here or whatever. Yeah, for welcome area, I mean, it's it's possible that something went wrong during uh, creation of the account too, right? If their if their uh, folder didn't get correctly populated, then um, you know when they log in, then they could wind up uh, could wind up clouded. But if if we're seeing more of that sort of thing in other places too, then that suggests it could be some other cause. New residents don't show up in search for the SL viewer. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure what you mean. You mean if if you search for someone by name and they're it's a recently created account, they're not going to show up in our search? Huh. Well, I should be using the same search back end for all the viewers, so I don't know why ours would be behaving differently.
yeah, I mean, if it was different search services, that would that would make more sense. So do they start showing up eventually, but just not, uh, you know, within X number of minutes of uh, first login or whatever? Hours. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be good to have a bug report on that one. Um, we could do some digging. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, uh, I don't know. We may have exhausted our topics for this week. Anything else uh, people want to ask about? Just, I, I wanted to throw this out there. Uh, please keep me informed if you start seeing lots of teleport errors, because I'm looking at our statistics, and it's a pretty flat. It's a pretty flat line for the last six months. A couple of couple of uh, burps, but but. They are explainable. So if, if you see things, let me. If you see something, say something. <laughs> it's pretty. It, it's pretty thorough. Uh, dark over at Sassy, or uh, dark over in Jay, or whoever was asking if I catch the ball. That's a different issue there. Yeah, that that actually has hopefully uh, the Nick the. Uh, Summer, uh, the, the next maintenance coming out is Summertime Blues. Uh, yes, I named them, but it doesn't usually, it's not usually visible. But uh, Summertime Blues has some, uh, 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 has some fixes for uh, presence, uh, uh, agent presence, which uh, should address a lot of the things that we've been seeing with friends offline and not, uh, and not online and and yeah, we hope. I thought that's what Twitter was for.
you know, uh, Twitter breaks my rule about never reading the comments. So. Undocking chat. Uh, how does it work in Firestorm? I mean, you don't have to hide it behind buttons. It's just that if you hide it, then the button is there to bring it back up. Um, are you saying that it's uh, it's not a oh, so it's not a floater. It's just a uh, it's just a fixed feature in the in the UI. Is that right? Okay. No, I, I've not used Firestorm. It, does it does it open it up in a separate window? You can just put anywhere you want on the screen or something. It, it sounds like it's more just a fixed feature of the UI that's at the bottom of the screen without uh, being in a in a floater. So you can't relocate it at all. Um. What if you're doing a lot of chatting? Can you expand that so you see more history? So it just kind of expands from the bottom to however tall you want it to be. Okay, so it sounds like you can turn these things into separate floaters if you really want to, but that that's not their default behavior. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would, I would think just in terms of making it visible to new users, just having the floater be up by default would probably also get the job done if we were doing a less detailed overhaul. Um, well, I mean, if you if you just have a box that you can type your own chat into, then yeah, you put it on the same line with the other buttons. But if you wanted to show chat history, that's got to take up more space somewhere, right? If you want to see other people's chat. So is chat handled like a special case? I mean, obviously we've got a whole bunch of different floaters that uh, you can, you know, bring up or or hide behind buttons. Um, I don't, I don't see how you could sort of reserve a, a fixed spot in the UI for all of them.
Okay, so if you resize the the bottom bar, then it shows lines of other people's text in addition to your input window. Is that the idea? Oh, you just you just want to see other people's text as as toasts. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we could talk about it. I I think the uh, everything in one floater is actually easier to read. But of course, if people don't know the floater exists and don't have it up, then they're not gonna not gonna be having a good day. Okay, well, uh, you know, I can pass that along if any, as usual, if anybody wants to file a feature request here, that's that's another way to get it in. Um, you know, I I understand your point. I I think it's a big enough change that uh, we'd probably keep where we are, but I could certainly see us changing the option so that the floater is is up by default, so at least people uh, people can see the the chat context uh, automatically. Yep, yep, you don't want people to have to spot the chat button if they don't realize that the option exists. Uh, yeah, kind of. It's a security thing where, where uh, not supposed to use other viewers on uh, on work machines. And yeah, I, I realize that uh, you guys aren't up to anything nefarious. It's just a general rule. At least I don't think you're doing anything nefarious. You'd tell me if you were, right? Yeah, well, for approving them, we actually do have to test them. Um, I actually have a separate machine that I 
can use for that sort of thing. Um, but it doesn't. But it does make it harder. Like not everybody has extra hardware sitting around. So um, so yeah, I mean we we can we can look at other viewers, but it's not uh, it's not completely straightforward. So what are your can't live without it uh, features in Firestorm, Dark Over? Collapse inventory. Uh, tell me more. What does that do? It just like gets all the folders at all levels of nesting to all kind of fold up at the same time. Okay. I mean, if I'm, I'm just looking at the inventory uh, in the SL viewer, if I if I just click my inventory, you know, at the top level, then all the other open things also stop being visible. I mean, it it is remembering that they were previously open, but it's not uh, showing them to me now. Is that does that not address the need? You you want it to basically forget the history and just crunch everything down. <laughs> Expand button. Yeah, that sounds optimistic. Consider. <laughs> Be it on your own head if you push that. Don't do it. Yeah, well, it collapse all would be, uh, you know, it would be an easy enough thing to have if uh, you're trying to add it. Control P. All right, I'm trying it now. Let's see. Well, it opened right away for me. If that's uh, specific to a particular platform or something. Are you on Mac? Huh, wonder what's different. As I say, it opens right away for me. Doesn't doesn't Firestorm do fit, have some build tools like like Snap to Surface also? Fine. Okay. Thank you, Sassy.
yeah, I think there's a lot of room for improvement in the uh, build tools, you know, more aligning and snapping and that kind of thing. Yeah, I have uh, Very, I have to, uh, very yeah, fine yeah. grain now. I have to do it manually, look at it from one angle, and then change my camera and realize that I'm moving it on the wrong axis and it just looks like it's in the right place. Uh -huh. Yeah, the the virtual machine approach might be uh, might be an option. Yeah. Favorites, yeah, we had a lot of requests on that one. Just favorite wearables or favorite uh, favorite everything's. All right, when you say wearables, do you do you mean like everything that's in your outfit, or do you mean the the old school, you know, shape, body, eyes, whatever things. Okay, so just generally stuff that goes on your avatar. You want to keep track of your favorites. favorites have multiple levels of folders or is it just a single flat list
So I assume with a flat list, you're not keeping a ton of stuff in that, or do you keep a ton of stuff in that and then just use search to find the particular thing you want? Yeah, it's nice to see a kind of simple streamlined feature that gets the job done. It's uh, it's easy to wind up adding a lot of complexity to, to well, everything, as we would know. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I was envisioning would tend to happen. You start out with a couple of favorites and wind up with uh, a whole lot. So what's actually happening under the hood is the favorites uh, storing links to the to the underlying items, or is it is it copies? Show original. Okay, so it looks like there's probably our, our links happening behind the scenes. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, I appreciate all the the insights this week. A lot of interesting, uh, lot of interesting use cases and suggestions. Um, we are about at time, so I guess I'll wrap it up. But thanks for coming by, and we'll talk more next time. Thank you very much, everyone. See you all soon.